What's up guys, back with another video at Colorado Department of Transportation. I told you we'd be a little ways west of the Eisenhower Tunnel and here we are at practically the entrance to Glenwood Canyon and I am here with the Deputy Director of Operations for CDOT. Bob's the man, he's driving me right now. Um, so I'm a little out of the loop. I was told we needed to park here because it was gonna be super sketchy for me to keep driving my Jeep to where we're going. Bob told me I would find out what this is about to look like. Um, so maybe you can fill me in now. What's, what's the secret to needing your vehicle with your emergency lights to go where we're going? One second, I'll be Go ahead. Yeah, when you hit about 126, let us know and we'll open the door for you. Copy, we're at the 128 right now. So why why it's uh, kind of sketch going in? We will be in the middle of the mountain, and what they have to do when we come up to this is they'll shut down the number one lane to give people out, get people out of the, the lane, so that we can come in and we have to make an immediate right angle turn on the interstate to go into the mountain, and it's a very small space. Okay. So we need to. Uh, you'll see here, we'll, we'll, we're going to close this lane down with these uh, lane usage uh, signs. We'll have a message board that tells everyone to get over. I will slip on that side, flip on my lights so people will start getting out of this lane. And then you'll see us, you'll see when we fly in here, uh, what we'll see. You'll see the fire trucks and everything else and all of our apparatuses. Sweet. And then we'll give you a tour in there. So we're coming up on the 126. We'll pass a small uh, tunnel. Okay. Uh -huh. And if I remember correctly, there's a couple tunnels here, right? There is. There's small ones. Okay. Uh, there's actually three, I believe. Uh, but the main tunnel, the big one, is uh, the next one. Okay. And uh, we we actually have a tunnel operations and a traffic operations centers inside uh, the tunnel itself, just like Eisenhower. But it's in the center of, of the tunnel. Wow. Okay. And then you and I were talking earlier, so this is a lot different in many ways than Eisenhower Johnson Tunnel. Um, one of the big things being this is like a 17 mile stretch of road. Correct, so this um, maintenance team and, and fire station, it was really the responders to the canyon as a whole. And so they're responsible for responding to any emergencies or incident management issues within the uh, the canyon. Okay. Let me just go ahead and pull in. I think it ops one. Oh, I'm at the 126.5. Uh, oh, here comes your door. Copy, thank you. So now we're, we're just a little coming up. If you see, they start uh, broadcasting on the signs that we're going to be uh, closing this lane up here. And then we'll go ahead and slip into this side. And here you'll see everyone merge. We have an X over this lane. This one's open, and they slow down the speed to 40 miles per hour on the, the variable speed limits. Uh, okay. We're going into this mountain. Oh yeah, left lane closed. Yep. Okay. And you'll see most people slow down. Locals understand this. And there's nobody behind me, so we're safe. Luckily, we are slowing down enough so it works out well. Let's see, we won't have to fly in and freak everyone out at one time. <laughs> oh, wow, this is wild. <laughs> Driven past here so many times in my life, I never knew there was a garage door here, <laughs> let alone a fire station. Yep. So, what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and back in. Okay. there yeah and then we will meet with the crew here at the station excellent and it's tight in here so uh, we cram everything we can in here so usually there's no personal vehicles okay um, so they actually get bussed in or through a, a van or they carpool in Wow so they gotta we gotta squeeze ourselves in here because obviously getting these apparatuses to run around has been a little challenging thousand gallons of water this uh, turret, we can empty that tank in about two and a half minutes. Uh, so we come up to a fire and we'll sweep the ground with the turret, get all the flammable liquids off the ground, and uh, then we can fight the fire by hand after that. Okay. It is an airtight cab. 
Uh, room for four, we have uh, SCBAs for each uh, person inside the unit. So four, four SCBAs. Okay. Also the back seat. You see we have uh, two SCBA units in there as well. Uh, we, we respond to a fire, we'll bunker up in the bunker room. We'll jump in and we'll tank up on the way to the fire. Okay. Uh, this is the uh, engineering space. Let me turn the power on, I'm sorry. This is where the engineer controls the hoses. We have Crosslay 1, Crosslay 2, which has a uh, piercing nozzle on it. If we have a fire under the hood, we can jam that through the hood and fill the hood, fill under the hood with foam. Okay. Uh, this is foam capable, plus it has a thousand gallons of water, like I said. Uh, we have the suction intake, and then we have the intake to fill the tank. So if we're out on a standpipe in the bore, we will hook our uh, supply to this, which will draw directly from our supply to the truck instead of filling the tank first and then go into the pump and so it actually helps the pump uh, uh, last longer because there's less pressure it has to build. And how many fill sites do you have throughout Glenwood Canyon? Well we only have them in the in the tunnel okay. itself and it's every 150 feet. Okay. And have our um, ABC and dry chem foam. And all the utensils for the uh, for the unit, all the hookups, adapters, and nozzles, and and such. <clears throat> Our suction hoses that we draft from the river are up here in case we need to to draft water from the river. Because, like I said, there is no um, hydrants outside of the tunnel in the canyon, and some pig mat to. Uh, clean up oil spills, diesel spills, things like that. It's uh, medical, we have our defibrillator, our AED, fire blanket, and also our um, med kits. This is extra foam, which we carry an extra 30 gallons for the, for the truck in case we need it. Back here we have a ladder. We, probably don't have a whole lot of use for, but uh, if we need to go down over the, um, the rail down to the bike path or something like that, that's what we'd use. And this is our supply hose. We'll run this to the, to the uh, standpipes and then supply the truck with the water. If we need to draft, that's our footer valve. We also have a uh, plug and dike and uh, some soda ash and a pipe clamp in here. This is our standpipe tool to turn the standpipe on. So if we have leaks in diesel tanks, we have a uh, way to plug those leaks. Uh, several extra rolls of hose, uh, just in case we need to crawl over vehicles and get to somewhere in the uh, canyon where it's not close. Um, this is our swift water rescue stuff, flotation devices and rope throws. Uh, our toolkit, we have uh, the axe, the hatchet, the um, battery cutters and cable cutters and our Halligan to be able to uh, breach vehicles that are stuck closed, crunched up. This here is the fire blanket. What we'll do with this is we deploy this over a uh, vehicle on fire and it smothers the fire. And are you using this only on electrical vehicles like some places are or are you using this on all vehicle fires? Electrical vehicles is what it's designed for but we'll use it in the bore on any fire. Have you used one yet? Have not. Okay. I have not. I'm curious uh, about that experience. I've been here nine years and I've yet to have a fire inside the bore. The main objective is to get the fire out, so we'll put the blanket over if possible, and then we'll get the fire truck. We'll push the unit outside of the bore so it doesn't damage the tunnel yeah. any more than it already has. That makes sense. Uh, extra SCBA tanks and, of course, water. Okay. <clears throat> and we can fill the truck from either. There's also a fill here. There's no discharge. There is a discharge on the rear. I understand that uh, Eisenhower uses the discharge on the rear, but we, we don't use that. We, we fight the fire with the hand line and the, uh, the roof turret. We also have a hose reel as well that we use. And that's, uh, in a nutshell, nice. that's our fire truck. It's the mini pumper, also known as the QR. It's the quick response truck. Um, it's been serviced, so there's a, the nozzle has some parts ordered for it, so it's actually 
uh, red flagged right now. A room for two. Um, we have two SCBAs, uh, only one in the truck. So this is not an airtight truck. Uh, we'll run all of the lights and sirens and stuff from inside. We have two radios plus a PA, and we're able to control the roof turret from the joystick inside. And this is also our, our engineering area where the engineer would take care of the pressure going pressure from the hose going to the firefighter. And you don't want to get him too much pressure. Anything over like 120 PSI is going to knock him down. So we want to make sure that he regulates that well. It does have a uh, relief valve. So um, hopefully, if it works properly, he doesn't get a surge of water and, and knock him down. And how many gallons of water does this carry? This is a 500 gallon tank with foam as well. And again, here's our second SCBA, um, just fire blanket and extra tanks, uh, AED. Have our utensils and again, soda ash and uh, some pig mat in case we have a spill. And also we have our pipe clamp, our supply hoses. So all this is supply, we don't use this to actually fight the fire, this is what supplies the truck with water. The hose reel on the back. A little tight quarters inside the tunnel here. This is also our swift water rescue plus our uh, ABC um, fire extinguishers. Also more tools. Uh, and hatchets, Halligan, uh, we have some um, Jaws of Life here as well, plus fusies and things like that. And again, you can fill this truck from this side as well on both of our hand lines. We do not have a, a, a piercing nozzle on this unit. And then do you respond with both of these at the same time, or how do you decide which We're hoping this one goes out first, okay. is, is the plan, uh, because we're able to get into this and get this out the door faster than we can get this one out the door. Uh, we're required to be able to have our fire gear on and in the truck within a minute and a half. Okay. Okay. So hopefully we're out the door within two minutes. Yep. And then again, the bumper turret, missing a couple parts, but we can still fight fire with the, uh, with the hand lines. And there's a lot of vehicles around us. Are these the only two like emergency fire apparatus? These are our two fire apparatuses, correct. Okay. Uh, this is our traffic truck. It's a utility truck. We have our uh, flatbed tow truck. Also our attenuator, which has attenuation device on the back, which will deploy um, behind any units that are out on, on the road in case there's a rogue vehicle that decides to come in our closed lane and he'll hit that and hopefully not injure himself too bad. That, that's a pretty cool unit. This is where we'll bunker up. If there's a fire, they'll call attention in the complex and there's gonna be at least four people in the complex at all times. So two people are, are gonna be able to fight the fire, possibly just one but two is ideal. So we'll come down and we will grab our gear, um, put our fire gear on, starting with the pants, pull up the suspenders, throw the jacket on. Everybody's got their own SCBA mask. This mask will go on before we go in the truck. And by the time we get to the fire, we're, we're uh, tanked up and breathing out. Mostly car accidents, We, uh, I fought a fire down by Grizzly Creek with a trash truck, a semi pulling a trailer with, uh, with full of trash that caught on fire. We fought that fire, we had that out before the fire department actually showed up. So. Yeah, it depends on where we're at in, in the canyon. And if we're on the west side, it's possible we're gonna call gypsum because the road's gonna be blocked eastbound. So we'll call gypsum and have them come in, possibly have them uh, charge traffic up to the fire. Yeah. So we can use either 
either or on either side of the canyon. And it was just a couple years ago, there was a pretty significant wildland fire here. Was that an initial response from uh, We did firefighters? respond initially, but once we got on scene, we found that it was way beyond our capabilities and we had to bring in pros. Okay, gotcha. So vehicle accidents, vehicle fires. Correct. Um, and I saw that water rescue equipment. How often does something happen that involves swift water? Um, more times than not, it's going to be Glenwood that comes through and, and takes care of that. They have a really, really good uh, swift water rescue team that, that gets here in no time. So we'll go out and do what we can do, but hope if, if we can, we'll throw a rope and, and be able to get somebody to shore, but usually by the time we get there, Glenwood's already there. That's good. And then what, what about like when it comes to flash flooding, rock slides, that kind of thing? Is that something that you respond with, respond to? And We also do that, yes. We, the mudslides in the canyon, we were here. We have uh, cross passes, but there's uh, seven that go from tunnel bore to tunnel bore throughout the uh, throughout the tunnel so if if there's an issue where there is mudslides this would be a safe haven so we have uh, food stores in some of the cross passes uh, in case people get stuck in the canyon so we're able to uh, sustain quite a few people for a number of days we respond to a lot of stuff every day it's something different yeah. I mean it's never the same thing you'll go out on a crash and it's going to be completely different than the crash you went on the day before um, as far as loading vehicles up with the wrecker and, and I mean, it's, it's always, it's, you gotta think on your feet and uh, you gotta think of your guys that are out there and try not to, try not to get anybody hurt. Have you ever had it, any personal close calls with vehicles? Uh, every day. Every day? Every day, every day. People go through this canyon 70, 80 miles an hour. Um, we're stopped on the side of the road trying to help somebody with a flat and we have inches away from 80 mile an hour traffic. So, I mean, we've got our head on a swivel all the time. Usually we try to have two people out there, one watching traffic and one helping. Uh, to see if we can get the, the road cleared quickly. Riding in this closed cab pierced dash is awesome. These pierced dashes with the cab like this are one of my favorite ever made, and it's so cool I get to enjoy the view in Glenwood Canyon. I, I feel like I'm on a scenic train ride right now. This is just awesome. Control room. That's, that's the brains of the of the uh, complex. So where they see everything out on the road. They can direct us. In the tunnel, we have uh, infrared. Okay. In the tunnel, cameras, and so they'll be able to direct us to the heat. Because you get out there and you got a fire, you're not going to be able to see because the smoke's going to be so heavy. Yeah. Uh, we have four fans per each bore. Uh, each. Uh, so the four fans, each one running at high, not each one, but all four together running at high speed will pull a million CFM. Wow. And we can push air plus also supply air. So depending on where the fire is at in the bore, we can clear the smoke for the um, uh, firefighters. Wow, okay. Impressive. And for people being able to, to escape. So if you like, we can go upstairs, I can show you the control room. Yeah, let's do that. Absolutely. Just an elevator in the middle of a mountain. It's an elevator to me, yep, you bet. Four story building, uh, 12s and 8s. We do two 8s and two 12s. Take a right. Two 8s and two 12s every week. So this is the upstairs. Uh, you can see along this wall is where all the, I mean, you've got um, just the history of the canyon when it was being built. Um, prior to it being built, the dirt road and two track road. And some history here. Um, this this piece of metal is actually from a magnesium wheel that was on a semi. That's all that's left of it. This is uh, our break room. And then the crew offices. 
And this is our control room. This is the, the brains of the operation. These are the guys that send us out on the road and keep a close eye on us. Wow. It's quite a wall of TV screens. Yes, it is. There's 126 cameras throughout the canyon. So we can keep an eye on most everything throughout the canyon. We have a few blind spots, but not too bad. Okay. Um, and these, these guys, uh, there's always at least two people in here 24-7. Uh, the ladies up front are our CROs, so they're in here all the time. They don't, they don't go out and fight fires or, or um, uh, respond to emergencies on the road. They help us from in here. Now the two back stations are where uh, we'll trade out. So these two gentlemen are here today. Tomorrow it'll be me or, and somebody else or whatever. But okay. there's got to be at least one fire life safety in the back and at least one CRO. So he's controlling the second large screen over here. So we do have the infrared cameras throughout the bore. So if there's a fire inside the bore, it gets so smoky that the firefighters aren't going to be able to see like I was telling you. But this will this will tell us where the heat is at. Wow. And they can direct us because they'll be able to see us out there. They'll be able to see the fire. They'll be able to direct us towards where the, where the hot spots are. Sure. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, other than Eisenhower, this is the largest sets of tunnel in the, in the state. Okay. Other than Eisenhower. We uh, take care of five tunnels in the canyon, and then we take care of Wolf Creek plus uh, Beaver Tail Tunnel in uh, the Beck Canyon. Wow, okay. <clears throat> so each one of these are, are a fan, and this is just for the westbound bore. So we can turn on one, two, three, or four fans simultaneously. Wow. Uh, if we turn on four fans at the same time, usually Glenwood will go a little dark. We have two power um, companies that supply us. We have uh, Holy Cross plus uh, uh, Excel. Yeah. So we get a lot of power from um, uh, the Shoshone power plant as well. So. And I suspect it gets pretty noisy in here if you fire these up. Yeah, yeah, it'll get, it'll get, get a little noisy, get a little windy. Wow. Yeah. So traffic is below us then? Traffic right now is below us, yes, that's correct. Okay. It's actually over to each side of us and below us. Wow. So we're kind of in the middle of the, of the two uh, lanes of traffic. And then it looks like there's more infrastructure over here too, on the other side? That is the, uh, that's the eastbound fans. Okay. <clears throat> Which is pretty much a mirror image of the westbound. So again, we could supply and um, we could, push air into the tunnel to push smoke out, or we can draw smoke and, and heat out of the tunnel. Yeah. I wish I could show you the, well, we can walk down, I'll show you one of the plenums. Okay. You wanna do that? We'll just try and be quiet. <laughs> So just give you a scope of the size of the fans. Wow. There's four of these each tunnel. Just massive. And then are those the sleeping rooms? We do have a lot of storage in here, of course. Um, this is the intake to the fan. So the tunnel ceiling through here, this goes all the way through, it's called a plenum. This will go all the way through to the end of the tunnel on both directions. Now the ceiling of the um, bore is, this, it's, it's, uh, it's got an aluminum substructure, so it gets to a, a, a certain temperature, it's gonna melt and fall in on the fire. That's, that's the concept. When that happens, uh, the smoke comes up into this void and we're able to suck it out, suck it out with uh, four large fans. Or we can supply air 
And you can see throughout this uh, plenum area, there's openings down to traffic. So if we supply air, that air will certainly go down through the tunnel and be able to push uh, smoke and heat out to protect our firefighters. The life safety components of tunnels, I think, are underrated. I, most people, as we drive through here, don't ever think about this. Oh, absolutely, and there's traffic right below us here. Oh, wow, okay. So these, these are about every 20, 30 feet, all the way through to the end of the tunnel. And they're just open holes. Correct. So that way, if you create a draft, this is gonna be the flow path that'll come out of there. That's correct. Wow. Incredible. Pretty cool. And uh, in a nutshell, that's our tunnel. I mean, everything that we do here is for the safety of the public. You're not allowed to be looking at anything but this traffic light. During parking oh. mode. So they'll Motion push a button and recording. they'll tell me when I can go and I, you just Lower have to trust. Wow, okay. Detection. So, you're gonna do this? You're not gonna have to come in both of us jump out? Or? Since you guys are gonna go that way, and I'm going that oh, way. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay, you got me? Don't flag me out, then I'll flag you guys out. All right, I'll watch my light. Yeah, watch for the light. You guys be safe. Thank you. Care. Nice meeting you. You as well, thanks for your time today. your side so <laughs> yeah I was just thinking I'm like I'm glad I'm in a car with uh, nice side curtain airbags hands okay, all right Whew. well that was wild <laughs> well there you go there we go that's there's how we get out there's the experience that's why we can't let your little Jeep come in. Uh, yeah, I really appreciate that. Glad I didn't press the issue and just trusted you. <laughs> nice. And now back into this canyon. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you so much for your time today. This has been awesome, and I'm really excited to show the YouTube world everything that CDOT does to protect the public. I think in a lot of ways that no one else uh, realizes. So. Absolutely, and we appreciate having you out with us and learning a little bit more of what we do. And as you know, uh, we do a little bit more than a typical person would think. We don't just do snow plows. So yeah, yeah, for we, sure. We appreciate you coming out and uh, hearing our little story. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, and YouTube audience, I will see you on the next episode. <laughs>